Good day everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking of Applied Statistics or Applied Statistical Analysis in Excel. This is the first video of a series on Applied Statistics using the mighty Excel tool that I'll be making. So do stay tuned for that. And before we dive right into it, do not forget to subscribe to my channel for the latest of data analytics across different technologies such as Excel and Python. So now let's talk on Applied Statistics. Why I am choosing the Excel tool? I am choosing the Excel tool because many people are quite familiar with Excel. It's one of the most widely used tools and it has a lot of statistical features and functions inbuilt in it. So you don't have to write any code for that. You can directly use the statistical functions and perform a lot of statistical analysis using Excel. Secondly, we are going to talk about apply statistical analysis here. Okay, so apply statistical analysis and or statistical learning and machine learning are two different topics. If you want to know the difference, I'm, I have made a video on that. Take, I leave a link in the description. You can take a look at that as well. But for this series, we'll be strictly talking on apply statistics in Excel and how you can get started with it. So first, let's get started and let's look at the data. And I'm going to talk about some terms on how we describe and talk about our data using statistics so that when you when you're studying some course or when you are re reading or learn learning anything, you are familiar with these terms. Okay, so let's take a look at a, a data set. So this is your data set. It has the data of around th 32 cars. Okay, and it has certain columns and certain rows. Everyone using Excel are familiar with columns and rows. However, in applied statistics or statistics, we refer to the columns as variables. So these are called as your variables of your data and your row, each row is known as an observation. So here you have 32 observations okay, of each variable. Okay, So you have th 32 observations of the car name variable, 32 observations of the miles per gallon, 32 observations of the cylinder and so on and so forth. So if you are from a machine learning background, then you would have used the term for the column data you call it as features and you engineer features or you extract features for, from a data. But in statistics or statistical analysis, we use the term variables and observations. Now, moving forward, let us talk about what are the most common types of variables that we see in statistical analysis and why it is important. So, so remember, applied statistics, why it applied statistics or applied statistical analysis is important and why it is different from machine learning. Though the terms are used inter inter interchangeably sometimes and they have uh, and they have some overlap, there's a clear difference. In statistical analysis, our prime aim is to infer some knowledge from the sample about the population. So what does this mean? It sounds quite abstract. Say I want to figure out what is the preference of students eating some menu items for breakfast across a, a particular region. Now it's going to be difficult to gather the data of all the students across that region. So I sample a few students. I take a survey and sample the responses of a few students and I try to infer about the larger population. This is all, this is applicability in many, many industries, say in the, in the pharmaceutical industries. I want to test how efficient a new drug is in the market. It is impossible to collect the data. It's going to be time consuming and extremely costly to collect the data of the entire population on the world of the world who's going to be taking the drug. So I'll sample, uh, I'll carry out some tests and I'll sample the data from the clinical test or, or, or clinical trials. And from that sample of data, I will try to infer something about the population that whether the drug is lower, lowering some parameters, increasing, increasing some parameters, how efficient is it, I can sam sample these in detail. I can form hypothesis and I can either refute them or accept the hypothesis. So that is why applied statistical analysis is very important. Traditionally in machine learning, we use a large amount of data from millions to trillions, right? When, when it is difficult to go through the data and find out the rules, we train our models to learn from the data and predict something. So that's why these are two, they have some overlap with the two distinct fields and both have its very, very important use for business applications. Okay, now having uh, uh, done a quick background on that and talking on the variables, now let's see the most common categories of the variables. Let's come back to that. So the most common cate uh, categories of the variables you will see is numerical variables. Okay, you can see the, uh, the variables that have numbers are, are numerical variables and 
categorical variables. So let us see an example of numerical variables. So you can see the mice per gallon feature, it has all numbers and it has numerical variables. But numerical variables are of two types. Okay, so you can see something like miles per gallon, it, it, it has real values. And let us take another numerical variable. Okay, let us say if I do, if I, if I count the cars. Okay, so let us me uh, let me give a random number. So I'm going to say random between one to ten. Okay, so these are the number. Say these are the number of cars made of this mix. So Mazda RX4 there are ten cars. Uh, Datsun 710 there are it are five cars. So this is an example of a variable, but it is of a discrete nature. So there are two types. So there are two types of variables: categorical and numerical variables primarily okay and numerical variables can also be of two types that is continuous variables and discrete variables so let us understand the difference between the two they look same but there's a difference say for example between two intervals say between 22.8 or 21.4 the number of values can be infinite in continuous variables say i'm measuring the height of people so one person's height is 171 centimeters, another person's height is 171.14 centimeters, and another person's height is 171.2 centimeters. So between, so they, they can be infinite number of measurements between two intervals depending on the precision, right? I may measure in centimeters, millimeters, I, depending on the on the precision used, they can be infinite values. But for a discrete numerical variable, the values between two intervals are always finite or fixed okay see it will not make sense say to count if a, if there is two and a half mazda rx4 or a datsun if the company made you know the datsun 1.25 cars mostly when we see a data as i mentioned in statistics mostly i want to do i want to learn something from this data and i want to estimate what is the best guess i can i can get from this data so say for example for the set of cars in this region, I am trying to uh, you know, find out something of the measurements of the miles per gallon or the mileage I have taken from this you know, data. So how can I get uh, some information on that? So let me uh, do that in Excel. So I am going to go to the insert. Sorry, I am going to go to the data tab. Let us use the data analysis for this. As I mentioned, all these tools are inbuilt. I don't have to do much calculations. Just need to learn the concepts. I click on descriptive statistics. Okay, let me select this. Select this, Control Shift down. Okay, let us click on labels in the first row and output range. Let me give it here only so in this worksheet so we can see and click on the summary statistics checkbox and click on OK. So here you can see something called as descriptive statistics of this continuous variable. Why this is called a descript uh, descriptive statistics? Because this describes the data or it gives us an inference of the data. Say I want, if, if I want to make a best guess on what would be the miles per gallon for the next car in, in, the, sam in the sample or in the population, what would be the uh, best guess? How, how could I make this guess? I can't put an, a random number, can I? I can't put something as 100 or 5 or 2000. It has to have, I have to make a, an educated guess or a best guess. Say there are missing values in this data. Say I don't have some of the sample data has some missing values. How do I fill this missing values? Is by making a best guess from the data that I have with me. So how can I make a, uh, a best guess? Let me take a look at the few values. The mean. The mean is nothing but the average of the data. So the average values of the data. But it is important to understand the mean is not immune to the outliers. So there may be outliers with very high values. Say there's one car whose miles per gal gallon is around 50. So that completely skews my data and the, and the mean value is not a true description of the data when looked at alone. You must look at these uh, descriptive statistics together. The median, okay, let's take a look at the median now. Let, we already saw the mean. Let's take a look at the median. So the median is nothing but the middle point of your data. So if I were to split this data, just 32, 32 observations, if I were to split this data, the middle value would be 19.2. So now the median is not affected by outliers. Say if I have a miles per gallon of a car by of you know 50, my middle value, the 50th value of my data will still remain as 19.2 because the outliers don't affect, affect the median, it is immune to the outliers. So 
If I look at the mean and the median together, I get a better sense of my data. Okay, mean and my median are very close to, to the data. Mode, the mode is the most frequently repeated observation. So 21 is the most frequently repeated observation. Again, it gives me uh, more help in making an educated guess. Standard deviation, this is very important to understand. Standard deviation is what is the average deviation of each observation from my mean. So the standard deviation here, the average de uh, deviation is 6.02. And this is very important to understand because in a normal distribution, uh, most of your data points will lie between, 95% of your data points will lie between two standard deviations from the mean. So again, it helps you approximate your data very uh, well. And you'll see how this helps later in, in hypothesis and different other statistical tests. Sample variance, variance is nothing but the square of the mean. Okay, I'll leave these two for now. Skewness is basically how skewed your data is, whether it's skewed to the right, it's to the left. We'll take that in a, another lesson. Again, range, as I mentioned, if I have to approximate the next value or fill in a missing value for a missing observation, how do I approximate? I need to know the range. So I cannot, as I, as I mentioned, I, I cannot a, approximate a value, say 100 or 200, because it's completely an outlier. So the minimum and the maximum value is from 10.4 to 33.9, so the range is 23.5. So within this range, I can approximate another value. Okay, so the range, min, and uh, and maximum are very important. And the count finally will give you the number of observations for this specific variable. So now I've got a good sense. So just out of the blue, if you would ask me to make a best guess on what I would feel if if there was a missing value or if I were to to take a, another a random sample, what would be the miles per gallon? I would say somewhere between the range from since the mean and the median are close by and the standard deviation is six so i, so I could you know fairly say that I, I would be confident that somewhere between say 23 to uh, uh, from 18 or 17 to 23 would be a, a fair bet i would guess something in that and fill in the you know missing value say around 19 or like 21 that seemed like a you know like fair bet for me it will not disturb the mean and the median too much as well so this helps you understand your data and infer about your data now again this the count cast is a discrete country uh, 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 is a discrete numerical variable and it's very important to understand this because when you learn more about about your distributions so distributions are something used to approximate your data okay you must have heard these terms such as normal distributions and t distributions so these are used to approximate your data but it's very important to uh, to learn them because the the distributions we use for to approximate or to estimate a continuous numerical variable and a discrete numerical variable are different now let's uh, uh, take a look at the cylinders at first glance this seems to be a numerical vis uh, variable but is it really if I click on the filter and see there are only three values it takes. So it doesn't make sense do, doing any numerical analysis on this, right? Is the number of cylinders present in a car. It doesn't make sense doing numerical analysis on, on, on a set of variables that has only three distinct values, right? So I can do something called as categorical analysis on this, on this variable. So this, this is, I would rather classify this as a categorical categorical variable having only three categories and let us do some analysis on this. So if I were to insert, I can insert a pivot table. Okay, let us click, click, keep it in the existing worksheet only so that we can see it here. Let us click on okay. Okay, and let us take the, uh, let us take the cylinders into the row section. Let us take the cylinders into the values. Let us change this to the count because we want to count. So value field settings, click on count. And let's do one more right click and show values as percentage of column total so here you can see this is given us a nice proportional distribution so eight cylinders there are is around 43.75 percent four cylinder cars are 34.38 percent in the sample and six cylinder cars are 21.88 so we can see immediately six cylinders are less so if for the next sample observation that were to be added to the sample or if you take another set of your observations of another random sample most likely the next car to be uh, added would be an eight cylinder or a four cylinder because this forms the major part of the of the distribution right it's 43.75 percent and 34.33 so again it helps you understand your data and when you put all of this together it will help you understand your 
entire population data so i hope you like this video i would encourage you to look at all of the variables in the data try to classify them into numerical uh, into categorical different types of numerical and try to do, do some analysis and please leave a comment on what you have learned from your analysis about this data i highly encourage you because by practicing you will commit this to memory and we can take a look at ka name as well this is a text data because you cannot see anything anything in a numerical neither is it you know repeating for a categorical so we use this for text analytics okay so i hope you like this video do leave a like and a comment on what you have learned of, from this video and stay tuned to my channel for the latest of data analytics across different technologies thank you